Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to continue talking about recording instrument parts and we're going to go over all the loop record options. Now the loop record options start here at record takes and go all the way down here including record takes to layers. So as a first example we're going to go over recording takes. So for this to work we need to turn on the loop and then that activates all of these functions. When we do record takes and we record takes to layers, it works exactly like it works with audio tracks. So I'm going to set up an instrument track and demonstrate that. We'll drop the Studio Grand on here again to create the instrument track. Everything should be set up and ready to go. All right, I'm going to record just a couple of chords over a two bar loop. With record takes to layers and record takes turned on, it will, in the background, as it loops through, record several takes. So let me just demonstrate how that works. All right, and you can see what happened here. Each take was recorded to a separate layer, and at the end of the recording, the layers are all expanded, as you see. If I'd like, I can rename the layers. I'm not going to do that right now. I can also build a composite from these layers. Now, just like with audio takes, your final take will be copied into the top layer. So you might want to remove the event from the top layer before you start to build the composite. I just swipe over the area I want and then double click it to promote it to my composite like this. And this way I can build a composite from an instrument or MIDI recording in exactly the same way I would do with audio. Really cool feature of Studio One. So that's how you use the recording takes functionality. Now let's turn record takes back to record mix. And I'm going to remove this track and do another example. All right, so for this I'm going to use drums. We'll try this one electronic kit. Now if you don't quite like the sound, you can just double click on a different sound and then try that. So I'll try this hip hop kit. All right, I think that will work just fine. We'll use the hip hop kit. Now I'll just close the UI for this and I'll also close the browser to get a little more room on the screen. We're going to use the two bar loop that we have going here to demonstrate what some of these other modes do. With record mix enabled, each pass through the loop, we can continue to add notes to our part. I'm going to demonstrate that by first playing the kick part and then the snare and then the hi-hat in separate passes through the loop. I'm going to leave input quantize turned on and we'll set this to eighths up here because this is what we'll be using for input quantize. I can also turn this off, though I don't think it will really matter when I'm in the record mix mode. With that set, I'm going to play, and you'll see that each loop through, I'll add a different drum part. So that's how it works. You can basically do sound on sound recording using MIDI with this approach. So next I want to demonstrate note erase. The way note erase works is if you hold down a note with note erase enabled, it will take out any notes of that value as it goes through the recording. That way you can change your mind about how you put in the part. So I'm going to record again using record mix. I'm going to flip to note erase and show how I can take it out and change my mind and then re-record it again. So that's a really nice capability to be able to develop your ideas while you're recording. Now let's take a look at note repeat. With note repeat enabled, as you hold down a note, it will continue to re-trigger the note based on the quantized grid. This is probably easier to demonstrate than it is to explain. So let's take a look at setting this to a swing 
and we'll do a little hi-hat part. All I need to do is set up the pattern that I want to use to play in the hi-hat, so it'll be like this. Then I'm going to hold down the hi-hat as I record, and I'll get a nice evenly played part. So I'll record. All right, so that's kind of how that works. Now there's two undo options, undo last loop and undo all. So as I'm recording, if I build a drum beat, I can just undo the basically what I just recorded on the previous loop, or I can undo all since this, I started recording. I'll build a little drum beat and you can watch as I use these two functions. Now the next thing I want to show you is the erase key. This allows you to do everything hands-free without touching the computer. You can do this note erase by holding down a key on your keyboard. So I've assigned it to C3 on my keyboard. That's the very top note on my little controller. If I hold that down, it will temporarily engage note erase. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. So one of the tricks to setting this up is to figure out which key you want to use. So look at your keyboard, figure out if you want it to be the top key or one of the keys that you don't need for programming in your drums. Then you can click right here on the MIDI monitor and then play the note. And you can see as I play it, it's a C3. So I'm going to then go back into this list here, find C3 and set that to C3. Now I'm going to just turn the sound down on this and then play in and I'll show you and explain what's going on. So we'll go back to record mix which is our core mode for this type of programming. I'm going to enable recording and now as it's recording I'm going to play in a basic part. So you'll see that there's notes appearing here and this is the, the kick drum part and then I'll put in a few snare drums as well. So you don't hear it. But now I'm going to hold down my erase key and hold down also the kick drum note. So that's a way you can use your keyboard to control programming beats without touching the mouse or the computer keyboard. So with that, we've covered all of the different record modes and options for instrument parts in Studio One. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.